everybody what's going on it's your boy so today we're going to be doing the four wheel drive bio board gear drive installation video now this video is going to be one of a three to four part video series where i'm going to be doing installation first rods less first impressions and then somewhere between a 500 to a thousand mile review or a thousand mile to two thousand mile review just to see how long the bio board gear drives last how the durability is how the wear and tear is and if and when when the green lock tight on the motor pins will inevitably break due to the design of the gear drive that we're going to go through further detail in in this video so without further ado let's get started alrighty so first things first on the installation is we're going to be installing our truck hangers as well as installing the back plates for the gear drive so that way we can adjust the angle for the angle that we want for our motors to be sitting at and then we're going to go through the process of putting the motors onto the hangers themselves so first things first we're going to grab our hanger and mount it onto my board dynamics base plate this is the rear truck right now so this is using my 95 a wfp chubby bushing in the rear um and then i have a 95a aps chubby long board um long board size bushing that's sitting on top of this one if i can actually find the bushing um because it's sitting on this on the other side of the table but i don't know where it exactly is there we go okay I found, I found it. So, here we go right here. I know the lighting is kinda piss poor a little bit with, but this is the 95A APS chubby right here. We're gonna install it. You gotta kinda like give the bushing a little bit of a fucking wiggle on the axle, on the, on the hanger itself, not the axle on the hanger, because it doesn't like to sit properly at least not initially once you kind of like get it on there then it sits but we're now we're going to use our bag of m4 by eight millimeter screws we need six of them to properly set up the angle that we need so this is our first six now we're going to grab our base plate back plate and we're gonna kind of just like eyeball it kind of eyeball it a little bit just to get a feel we're probably gonna do we're probably gonna have this angle set up like this for the adapter so we're just gonna take one screw for the time being align it up with one of the holes we're gonna hand install it it's a bit hard trying to see where where the hole is going to be. Oh, I dropped the damn screw. I'm doing this all in one take, so if I fuck up at any, like that, we're just going to roll with it because I'm not doing multiple takes on this I have just discovered that I am actually installing the damn screws on raw they're supposed to be in the inside not the outside so that's fun that I was installing it wrong this entire time. Well, I only did the first two screws before I realized that I was installing it wrong, but... Again, this is why I said I'm gonna do this in one take. Because... I don't feel like... I don't feel like redoing takes. Also, I can actually use my drill. Since it goes on the inside, so... It's actually perfect for me because I can speed this along. Wow. 
Okay, so now that I have all six of the M4 by eight millimeter screws attached to the hanger adapter and the back plate for the gear drives, now I'm gonna do it for the rest of the uh, sides of the hangers because I have this side to do and then the two sides on the front hanger. And then I'm gonna move on to the next part of the installation process, which would be installing the motors and setting the angle and everything for the motors. All right, so when it comes to installing the motor onto the motor mount, there are a bunch of different mounting holes on the back plate of the BioBoard gear drive. Now, in my case, since I'm using the 4.0 ratio, I need to be using the slider mounting holes that are here, 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 and here. I know the lighting and angle is like a little bit fucking horrible so just bear with me the lighting in my apartment isn't as bad as the camera just tries to make it out to be but i mean it's not the greatest but like i said at any point these are your mounting holes that you need to use in order to use the 4.0 now because bioboard has designed the gear drive in a way whereas though it has a wide range of different ratio sizes all smashed and conglomerated into one singular casing that is why they just have this plethora of goddamn mounting holes that you see all over the back plate of the gear drives um, I just moved my fucking camera's flash I like to have better lighting angle on it so like I said before use these four sets of holes right here two top that's adjustable and the two bottom that's adjustable and if you're using the 4.0 which i'm using another thing that you have to do when you are installing motors onto a gear drive is scratch surface scratch the motor pinion which is this right there you need to surface scratch it with some sort of dremel s tool so i got this i don't know I can't remember what this is exactly called, but I usually use this to uh, surface scratch nickel off of cells whenever I'm cleaning cell tabs or something doing a rebuild, which I don't do often. But I have it connected to my drill here. Drill set to relative, actually it's not set to low RPM. Okay, now it's set to relative low RPM. It's set to about 4,000 RPM. Now all you take and do, very simple, you just... Now see, all we're doing is just surface scratching the motor shaft of the motor because we want the green Loctite, which is here, we want the green Loctite to help adhere much better on the motor shaft, the motor keyway, which is this little thing right here, and the motor pinion. We want to make sure that this all, all through these components adhere super well together. We're also going to make sure that we bore out not bore out but slightly dremel the inside of the motor pinion as well again all we're doing is primarily just surface scratching the inside of the motor pinion as well as the shaft itself that way we'll just blow out the metal dust that's on the motor pinion and then if I could find my little rag we can clean off the surface dust of god damn it nothing's ever near me when I need it to be I can't find my oh there it is okay I was looking for the little rag just to clean off this little bit of excess like dust and debris and whatnot okay but there we go so now that the motor pinion and the motor pinion and the motor shaft has been sufficiently scratched up. Actually, we're probably going to scratch just a little bit more. There we go. Now that it's perfectly scratched up, we're going to go ahead and 
get this prepped for the green Loctite. So what you're going to do now is you're going to install your motor keyway into your motor pinion first. So we're going to put this on and it's just going to slide right in. Now, sometimes the keyway doesn't like to slide in perfectly fine, which is okay. It is, depending on tolerance, going to have some semblance of resistance. Then we're going to take our green Loctite here and we're just going to dabble green Loctite within the keyway cutout itself on the motor shaft as well as the motor shaft itself. We don't have to worry about green Loctite and putting green Loctite inside the motor pinion as well because the green Loctite that's here is going to slide along the shaft and it's going to cover the inside of the motor pinion as well. So once we sufficiently cover it, you don't want to put too, too much because the green Loctite is going to get pushed back along the shaft um, as we're sliding the motor pinion on. Now we want to go ahead and try to just pop the motor pinion right in. You want to make sure when you are sliding the motor pinion on, you're holding the back end of the motor with your index finger or first finger and then using your thumb to hold the back plate on while you're pushing the motor pinion on. The reason being is because when you're putting force and weight onto the motor shaft, you are pushing the can of this outrunner motor backwards and that could potentially bend the metal C-clip that's inside of the back plate here that's behind the motor pinion in the spacer and you don't want to accidentally bend that motor C-clip out of place because then it'll make your can loose and you don't want your can to be loose. So like I said before, once you install it, it should look exactly like this. So we have the black spacer here, which is a motor spacer that you're supposed to use to get the right amount of spacing to make sure that the motor pinion isn't touching the back plate while you're trying to align the wheel gear and the motor gear together to get the perfect backlash. So now that this is set up, now we're going to take our motor pinion with our wheel adapter already screwed on to it. And we're just gonna pop that on just like so. If you want to install it, all you need to do, this is how it comes with originally, not put together. All we're going to take and do is grab our, what are these? These are, I think these are M3 by like 10 mils. If I'm not mistaken, I could be incorrect, but I believe these are small button head M3 by 10 mils. All we're going to do is take these little screws here. I'm going to take my hex tool. We're gonna flip the pinion around and align the holes. We're gonna align the holes of the motor adapter to the holes on the pinion. I don't know why all this like mess is just on my goddamn pinion. And anyway, at any rate, we're gonna take this and I'm going to adjust the camera. Uh, we're gonna adjust the camera a little bit, hold on. Again, I'm doing all this in pretty much one take, so there we go. So now we're going to take that. I only have red Loctite. Primarily, you would like to use blue because you want this to be able to be easily disassembled if need be. Um, but I only have blue in this instance, or I said only have blue in this instance. God damn it. I only have red in this instance, so... Red is just what we're going to use. We're only going to use a dabble of red though. We don't need we don't need a lot of red because we don't want to just like semi permanently lock this on to the goddamn wheel adapter. Actually, I don't even think I'm using the right hex tool. Ow, fuck. <laughs> Ow, I had a tool hit my fucking foot. Oh, actually the tool hitting my foot was a great thing because I actually found the right hex tool. I think. No. No, I did not. Damn it. I'm trying to find the right hex tool. I don't remember if this is 2.5 or 3 millimeter. I think this is 2.5. Yeah, I think this is 2.5 millimeters. Hold on. Okay. 
Sweet. So, now what we're going to do is just drill this on. We're not going to drill it on it completely because we need to at least put on two of these M3x10s in order to make sure that the holes are aligned, properly aligned. So we're going to put this other one on the other side. God damn it. And remember always to set your drill on low RPM whenever you're setting up screws so that way you don't strip anything. So we're just going to have it in between two and four. Alright, now that that's set, we're going to do the other ones. Okay, now that all of our button heads are installed onto the adapter and the adapter is installed, this is how you put the adapter together. But now that we got, like I said before, the wheel pinion and the motor pinion onto the motor shaft, now we're going to go ahead and adjust the backlash. So right now the motor pinion and the wheel pinion aren't touching at all. There's no connection. I can spin this freely and this freely and they're not touching. So what we need to do is grab our three mil bit and we need to loosen these motor pinion screws. And the reason why we're loosening is so that way we can adjust the backlash accordingly. You don't want to loosen it too much because you don't want your motor to start hanging off of the back plate. Because with this particular design, gear drive design, of uh, the motor being directly attached to the back plate rather than other gear drive designs like Apex's gear drive design or Newbie gear drive design where the motor mount holes and motor mount attaches to its own separate plate that has a big enough spacing for support bearing to also help reduce an axle load which is something that this gear drive definitely needs in my opinion in order to become a much better drivetrain um, for use another thing that tends to happen like i said before prior just as a side note i know i'm all over the place but remember how i said whenever you put on the grand Loctite you don't want to put too much because it'll wind up pushing it'll wind up pushing along the uh, the motor shaft and getting on the motor pinion well it just did exactly that so I'm just cleaning off some of the excess green Loctite they didn't even put that damn much but it still happens but anyway okay now that we have these pinions loose or these screws set screws loose we're going to move motor pinion up and we're going to slide it back down until we get the near perfect amount of backlash so with the way this backlash needs to be set is we want to make sure that there's probably a millimeter of space or maybe less than a millimeter of space in between the wheel tooth and the motor tooth so that way whenever you shake the motor pinion, the wheel pinion spins in tone, there's going to be a slight clicking sound once you set it up. But since we have just about that millimeter of space, we're going to go ahead and just space it up just a little bit more. And now we're going to screw the motor pinion back on. Actually, we're going to readjust it slightly. All right. And now we're going to slide the wheel pinion off. And now we're going to screw in the last two screws. Okay, now that the backlash has been properly set, we should be able to just slide the wheel adapter on. Yep, here we go. Should be able to just slide the wheel adapter on, roll and slide it. Okay, so the backlash is a little bit too tight. Um, I know it's probably a bit hard to see 
from the angle but the backlash is just a little bit too tight so what we're going to do is we're just going to slightly push the motor pinion back and then screw back on the only thing that i don't like about gear drives like this with adjusting backlash is it takes a bit of adjustment to probably to properly get the backlash right because of the fact that every time you screw the screws back on the backlash gets adjusted differently gets set differently so you have to keep consistently adjusting it back and forth another thing that people will tend to do to make this process easier which i could do for myself as well is the paper method and i can actually show you that if i can find a piece of paper to use so i'm just gonna take a sheet of paper okay so all you do is you take a sheet of paper you can fold it once or fold it twice and what you can do is loosen the motor that way you can get the backlash readjusted you don't want to loosen it too much just enough put the wheel gear back on slide the motor up completely Put the piece of paper in between the gear drives, push the motor pinion as close as you can possibly get to the wheel pinion, and then screw the motor back on. Once you put those first two set screws on, you can roll the piece of paper right out, screw those last two screws back in the wheel pinion back on and now you hear the clicking you hear that clicking now you've set basically the perfect amount of backlash it's not the pinions aren't too far whereas though the motor pinion and a wheel pinion might disengage from each other and it's not too close to the point whereas though they're so pushed up against each other that it's adding additional wear and tear it's just that right amount so now that you set this like that we are practically almost done with installing the gear drives the only thing we have left to do now is essentially grease the gear drives put on the front plate and then put on the wheel adapter and then finally the wheel and then we'll be done with installing the drive train um oh and one more thing we also need to add on the ring rubber ring spacer as well we're going to add that on to this once we put the front plate on so first things first we're going to get the grease process done so let me grab the grease really quickly all right so got my grease so when you're using steel on steel pinions you want to use red and tacky red and tacky is a very very good high quality lubrication for metal or metal applications like gear drives and other things of that nature what you basically want to do is just take I'm just using Q-tip and putting some red and tacky on it. You want to just put red Loctite all over, or not red Loctite, red and tacky grease all over the teeth. You want to cover the teeth as much as possible, but you don't want to put too much. So the method that I'm basically doing is I'm grabbing a glove, I'm putting it on, like three teeth and then I'm brushing it in between all of the teeth as many as the teeth as I can cover and then I'm shifting and doing it over to the next set of teeth until I cover the entire wheel gear with grease and then of course the grease from the wheel pinion is going to rotate clockwise and wind up covering the motor pinion as well so I don't have to necessarily worry about greasing up the motor pinion when I'm doing this process. All right, so once you've properly greased up your pinions, you should be able to just roll the motor and get the grease on it. Now, the clicking sound is gonna be gone for the time being just because of the fact that you added grease into the gears, but that doesn't mean that the backlash has been changed or unadjusted or anything like that. The backlash is still perfectly set fine. 
Um, but this grease is just going to make sure that the wear and tear overall of the pinions is as minimal as possible and the teeth doesn't start to get dull over the course of time they'll be riding and accelerating and braking hard so now that we grease this now we can put on the front plate but another thing i wanted to mention specifically to the bio board front plate is it actually has this little fill hole here so instead of me doing what i just did which was uh manually add all the grease the amount of grease that i wanted onto the pinions i could have just put this front plate on like so and took like a syringe and use the fill hole and fill it. But the only reason why I don't like that method and I don't do that is because as you can see, this gearbox front plate is so fucking big and there's so much space in here and there's a lot of spacing in between the motor pinion and this gap for, uh, for the motor shaft to go through that majority of that grease would just go into this general area and not a lot of it will go onto the pinions which is what you want so even though they did put in this the, implement this design where you could just syringe uh apply grease i don't really like that design and i don't really like that method of grease and gear drives i'd rather just do it normally uh because doing it normally would yield you much better success so like i said before we're going to put this front plate on and then we're going to clean the excess grease that is in between the seams of the front plate and the back plate. Clean it as best we can. There we go. And now we're going to screw these together. Okay, now we're going to lock the front plate onto the back plate using these m4 by 25 millimeter screws that came included with the drivetrain or with the gear with the yeah with the drivetrain i'm sorry i'm slowly delirious right now so we're going to make sure we cover this with a little bit of loctite make sure you use blue of course in my instance i'm using red simply because this is all i have on hand outside of green loctite so we're just going to put a little dabble on both ends of the screw and there's four screws here so there's the two front screws holding the front plate on and then on the back of the gear drive there are two screws on the back plate that goes to the front now the two screws in the back that go to the front are these silver m4 by 25 millimeter screws that we have to install now in this case i'm just going to use a manual hex tool just because of the fact that I can't get to the back of the gear casing now that it's fully installed onto the gear drive or now that it's fully installed onto the hanger I can't get to the back of the casing to install this so we're gonna hand install it first and then we're gonna take our tool and as best as we can we're going to try to twist this on. I just want to pause the speed up just to say that having these two screws in the back be mounted like this rather than being in the front mounted to the back is such a major design flaw because it makes this process of installing the gear drive so much more fucking tedious because it's hard to get to the back of these damn screws to actually screw them on because of the fact that the gearbox is already installed onto the mounting plate or on, yeah onto the mounting adapter for the hanger so bioboard definitely needs to change this aspect of the gearbox uh, to make installation a lot easier because this installation process right here in this instance is not easy at all Okay All right now that I've successfully installed one of the two screws back holding screws Onto the front plate. We're just gonna leave the second one off I'm gonna install the second one on my own time because that took unreasonably too long just to install one of these two back screws on. Um, the next part of this installation process that we're gonna go to do now is 
putting on the rubber V-ring on the wheel adapter. So it's going to be installed like this, where, hold on, I'm trying to just get it installed for you, just so you can see, where you see that the V portion of the flap is facing towards me. So what we're going to do, is we're just going to take, ooh, is we're just gonna take this and we're gonna add a little bit of grease to it. And we'll end up getting grease on my fingers. And now we're just gonna grease this and put this right on. Slide it on just like that. So now the V-ring is installed. So I actually got it wrong. So in order to properly install the V-ring, you wanna push the flimsy portion of the V-ring inside of the gearbox itself so the thick part can remain on the outside and so this is an easier process said than done but just get your nail in there and try to just rotate the wheel adapter a bit to push each section in and eventually you'll get you'll get the V-ring inside of the casing. Oh, this is... Okay, so now the V-ring is actually installed properly, and we're just going to clean up little bits of excess grease from the valve of the V-ring. There we go. Just going to spin it with our hand, and make sure that the V-ring is fully seated. All right. Now that the V-ring is fully seated properly, now we're going to go ahead and take our AT wheel adapter because I'm going to be installing AT wheels. And we're going to be using our M4 by 10 millimeter screws. And we're going to be installing the AT wheel adapter onto the gear drive. So I'm just going to drop all our screws here. Grab our drill, grab a little bit of red Loctite, put our adapter on and we're going to install it. So remember you put the first screw on lightly, you don't screw it down all the way, just so that way you can get to the other side. Once you do the other side, then you can put all the rest of the screws on. And I accidentally moved the damn camera with the drill. I'm trying to install this. Alright, there should be a grand total of five holes. So in the star pattern. So that's hole number three. This is hole number four right here. Sorry about hitting the camera again. 
and then this Don't is hole numero five down here. Alright, now with that's installed, we are pretty much done with gear drive installation now. The only thing left to do, thing that's left to do, is to install the wheel hub onto the gear drive itself um, and also put a spacer in between the adapter or the wheel gear itself and the hub so that way we can install the hub properly. So just to actually show you when I find the right mode wheel that's going to go in the back here. So this is my massive QND fucking tire on the MBS Rockstar 2 hub. We're going to just slide it on. It has a spacer on the inside. So right now I'm just checking the spacing in between this and the wheel gear and the spacing is a bit too close because there's a lot of thread showing here. So all we're gonna do is take a small spacer, place the small spacer on. And put the wheel back on the hub like that. Okay, now the spacing is a lot better. You don't want the wheel hub to be directly touching the wheel adapter because that can cause excess wear on the mounting screws that we're going to use to install this. And the screws that you're going to use to install this is either M4 by 45 millimeter or M4 by 50 depending on the distance. Now it seems like to me that I have to use M4 by 45, maybe 50? So we're gonna go ahead and try, but I do want you guys to see the inside here, what I'm talking about when it comes to the spacing. So you see how the space is just about right? There's just enough space gap between the actual wheel hub itself and the wheel adapter. We wanna make sure that a few millimeters of space is there. So I don't have long enough hardware, at least on the hub right now. I have the hardware in here, just don't have the hardware on the hub itself um, to install it and then we can see here from this side this wheel is slightly unbalanced so you can see on this side that there's more than enough thread to actually screw down the wheel hub we're gonna go ahead and put in the right length hardware and then once I put the light right length hardware on we're gonna install it onto the gear drive itself so I hope you guys did enjoy this sort of botched installation video uh, for the BioBoard 4-wheel drive gear drives. Um, the few things I just want to mention about the gear drives that I kind of don't like, whether it be design flaws or just general installation process that I just didn't like and I hope that they change in the future. First of all, the way the two back uh, M4 screws are implemented for making sure that the front and back plate of the gear drive is fully installed to each other perfectly. I think that all the screws should just be on the front plate to make it easier to reach, especially with a drill, because otherwise you have to hand tighten it like how I, how I had to. And that hand tightening process just takes way too fucking long. It took me like two minutes just to do the first screw and I still have like seven other screws to do because I have a four wheel drive set up. Um, so that process is annoying um, as far as design flaws and what I feel like needs to be improved on the gear drives to make them better. Um, taking the motor mount plate and changing it so that it's completely independent of the gearbox itself, it's removable so that way a support bearing can be added into all that extra space that's behind the motor pinion is something that definitely needs to be done with this gear drive because that support bearing is just going to help reduce axle load and that axle load reduction will help make sure that your green loctite doesn't break another thing that needs to be incorporated into this gear drive is rub screws set screws two set screws needs to be incorporated onto the motor pinion to allow us to have a physical locking mechanism for the mo between the motor pinion and the motor shaft so that way we're not just solely reliant on green loctite to hold the motor pinion onto the shaft because from my experience from other drivetrains that uses green loctite is just the sole way of holding the motor pinion onto the shaft 
it will inevitably and eventually break and it does not take long at all especially if you ride your board very fucking often like how i like to you're gonna wind up breaking that green loctite loose and it's gonna wind up causing the motor pinion to fall off relatively quickly which could cause your whole gear drive to seize up and cause you to fall off and you just don't want that so in the future i definitely hope that they include a removable motor mount that's completely independent of gearbox with a support bearing and the uh grub screws set screws onto the motor pinion in order to lock the motor pinion onto the shaft um anything else that i have to complain about as far as the gear drive goes from the installation um personally i didn't like the uh syringe hole for the grease to add grease into the gear drives again i know that's just meant for it to be just a simple process once you put the gear drives together then you squeeze in some uh grease and then rotate the motor around so that we can get the grease all around the gear drive i personally just don't like that I, because i just rather it just i'd rather install the grease on normally rather than use the syringe method because the syringe method is only going to cover primarily the massive space gap that is next to the motor pinion from where the syringe point is point entry is I don't really like that um and one more thing that i just noticed after i installed the gear drives which i actually want to show you guys um is that the wheel pinion is slightly loose um after you're done installing now the idea behind it is that the force and preload from you screwing your wheel if you're using an AT or a street wheel or your AT wheel hub onto the gear drive and lock nut will push the will push put pressure on the hub and then from the hub to the wheel hub adapter and then from the wheel hub adapter to the wheel pinion to keep the wheel pinion um, fully seated inside of the gearbox casing so it can stay fully connected to the motor pinion it it's not a design choice that I personally like because I can just pull this. I can't pull it completely out, of course, because there's only so much of the wheel adapter I can pull out, but I can actually pull the wheel gear up and down from inside of the casing from the wheel adapter due to this design choice. That's something that I don't really care for. What they need to do instead of having the gearbox design like that is make it so that this adapter is just quick release make it so that once you put this front case on the front case is on then there's going to be the uh, five star screw pattern that you need to use to mount the wheel adapter on you can mount the wheel adapter onto the hub first then from the hub to the uh adapter or actually yeah, I think yeah, I think that'll work. Um, <laughs> I think that'll work. But have it set up that way, so that way you're not able to just freely shake and move the wheel pinion from the outside of the gearbox. Because I shouldn't technically be able to do this, but I can do this. And I, I even double checked the installation uh, paper that actually comes with the BioBoard gear drives when you buy them just to see if there was anything i did wrong with an installation process and it wasn't anything i did wrong with as far as the installation process i followed it to a t and this is just how it is like i said before this isn't sh this shouldn't affect the performance of the drives in any shape or way or form but i don't like that again it's in order to keep this from shifting and shaking it's reliant on me mounting the wheel onto the axle and then screwing it down with a lock nut and then that force from the lock nut pushing up against the wheel hub will then push up against the adapter to help keep the wheel gear fully seated within the gearbox i don't really care for that um probably definitely needs to change that design up around but i mean otherwise it's a pretty good gear drive design again it's not perfect it definitely has its flaws that needs to be changed and redesigned in order for it to be a much better gear drive but i can't wait to finish installing all the rest of my gear drives together 
because I need to finish putting the rest of them together. And then finally taking this out and doing the test ride. So I'll see you guys on the next video when we're actually doing the test ride for this gear drive.